This is part three and the final part of the Aces of the Week galleries for the second week of January. This one deals with tiers four to six only. So let's have a look at the gallery. everybody and welcome back to Fuji Splits and this is the final part of the Aces of the Week for the second week of January 2019 dealing with tiers 4 to 6 only. Now I have to apologize it's a pretty long video but first enough we've got a good friend of mine Jiggy with it rolling out in the Matilda the British tier 4 heavy on the North American server. Now I love the Matilda okay it's recently had what some would argue is a buff, but 5.5, okay, it buffed it a little bit, but it also nerfed it beyond belief. So let's have a look at the buff first. Well, it sort of changed the weight a bit, um, to be honest with you. And with that, what happened was it got a bit faster, which was nice because it was a really slow tank. Its engine power increased and, you know, it, it, it got better aim time and traverse speed. But that's not the point of this tank. This tank was always a slow lumbering beast, even in real life. Let's talk about the nerf. Well, the nerfing I totally disagreed with. Firstly, the HP dropped from 590 to 520, so it's got less hit points. Its DPM, well, that went down as well, from 900 down to 751. Penetration decreased from 120 down to 89. The velocity of the rounds, this is all standard APR by the AP by the way, went from 1,341 to 1,150. Uh, it, it, you know, and it's a crying shame. However, that still doesn't stop it from being a fun tank. And as you see here, Jiggy with it, although he's taken a bit of damage, has blocked almost 500 and he's dished out 712. Unfortunately, I haven't seen all the data on the rejigging in 5.7. I did look and I haven't seen anything on the Matilda, to be honest with you. So I don't think this tank, unfortunately, is going to get any more buff in 5.7, which is a shame because this used to be a really formidable tank. And OK, I get the fact that we want newbies to play the game and we don't want them to disappear. but. Historically, well, you know, this tank was a bit like that, it, taking away most of its uh, hit points, etc, etc. It sort of belittles the tank to an extent. However, as I said, that doesn't take away the fact that it's unplayable. It's not. It's very playable, as Jiggy with it here is proving. I mean, he's now done over a thousand damage, he's bounced over 500, close to 600, and he's taken six kills. He is still on a roll. He's still bouncing shots all over the shop. 700 bounces now. 1,184. I mean, you used to be able to, in the old days, before the big culling in 5.5, stick this tank in front of anything at tier 4 or 5. And, and it, 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 sorry, tier 4, 5, and 3. And it, it would, really would, nobody could pen it. And it was absolutely formidable. You had to get round the back or round the sides. And you really had to search for the areas to pen. Now, well, you know, you can pen it pretty easily nowadays. But you can be penned quicker because you can get to uh, where the enemy are a lot faster than you used to. But as I say, he's still bouncing shots. He's still managing to plow the stuff in. And because this is tiers 4, the games are last a lot longer now because they don't dish out as much damage. Another kill for Jiggy with it. Kill number 4. 1,530 damage, 820 bounces. He's up against pretty formidable tanks there. I mean, the M7 is a bit OP nowadays. Funnily enough, it never used to be. But since the great 5.5 culling, yeah, it's, it's, it's now a little bit OP. I mean, look at this poor thing. I mean, it's dishing out damage of, uh, of 40. <laughs> it's a tier 4 game. I mean, the M7 dishes out damage a lot more than 40. I mean, there's 120 there. Okay, it's still got a fantastically amazing reload. There's kill number five. So he's still having fun. And he's still going to bounce the Sal 40. 
and he now has 1,180. There's no stopping him. So the tank is still pretty impenetrable at the best of times. He's done shy of 2,000 damage in this thing. It's one on one. Uh, well, no, it's not anymore because he's killed it. 1,971 damage. Bounces 1,300. Takes six kills. I mean, what a fantastic role that was and a thoroughly deserved mastery. And I'd like to thank my friend um, Jiggy with it there for kindly sharing that replay with us. Next up, another good friend of mine, Recoiler, from my clan, FTC1. Yay! Rolling out in the BDR G1B, the French Tier 5 heavy tank, again on the EU server. Again, this is a tank I used to really like. But again, during the great culling of 5.5, again, some will argue it got a buff because it got a little bit faster, sort of, uh, with its uh, effective power to weight ratio. And that's about it. I mean, everything out top nerfed. Its hit points went down from 780 to 690. The rate of fire decreased. Your reload time, you know, increased. Everything changed. And, and yeah, okay, it didn't have, well, it did. It, it got nerfed on the DPM. For your standard AP, it used to be um, 1,341. It's now 1,257. Again, it was a tank that was toyed with. Um, didn't really touch its uh, armor, it, it, you know, but the hit points did drop down, which effectively does make it slightly weaker. This thing used to bounce everything as well. This was like the, the French version at the, of the Matilda at a higher tier. But as you can see here, Recoil is not having much of a problem with it. He's already bounced 225 and he's dished out a thousand damage. The good thing about this tank is it does have a very effective gun. And it, okay, it'll move around the battlefield a bit better than what it used to. It's got a bit of a better traverse speed. But again, this was one of the tanks that was tinkered with because a lot of people complained that it was OP. It was never OP. It was just a formidable opponent. Oh, what another great kill. Two to his name. Over 1,000 damage now, 225 bounces. Like I say, back in the day, you would bounce everything in this thing. This was a really tough cookie and by changing its parameters it, it devalued it again in my opinion a little bit I mean, if you're going to nerf something nerf that nerf that um, that, that scavenger <laughs> because loads of people are complaining about that now and, and where does it stop the fact of the matter is this was a nice tank i don't think it was op i never thought it was op it was a bit of good fun to roll out with now Okay, it's it's a mediocre tank. It's not as formidable as it used to be. But you can still play it as Recoiler here is proving. You know, you're still going to do decent damage. 1,300 so far. Four kills. Bounce 700. Scavenger is not long for the world. There is kill number five. And like the game we've just seen with the Matilda, it, it's going the same way. Although the, um, the A20 is still around. Although that thing has been just nerfed to oblivion, and that is a shadow of its former self. And it's against the Hetzer, so, you know, I favour the Hetzer, to be perfectly honest with you. Back to Recoiler. As I said, he's not really struggling in this tank. Okay, he's lost a lot of hit points. I mean, he'd already lost a lot of hit points before he even got in the thing, because Wargaming decided to take uh, quite a few hit points away from him. But you know, that's just the way it goes. He used to have 780, he's now got 690. But he's handled the tank wow he's, he's played it you know sensibly and intelligently and this is the thing the lower tiers are still playable just because they've been nerfed they're still playable it's just a different type of gameplay and i said that in one of my other videos it's just a different style of gameplay and there you go look like see the a20 is struggling with that headset back in the day the a20 wouldn't but Recoilers along with his BDR and he's going to sort these things out. That was a great shot by the way, pretty fantastic. Got a really good roll there into that Hetzer. And what can he do now? Can he get another one? Of course he can. And that's kill number six. Just shy of 2,000 damage, 770 bounces and he gets six kills. So I'd like to thank Recoiler of FTC1 yay, for providing and kindly sharing that replay. It was fantastic to watch. Next up, another friend of mine, Purser858, 
one of FTC3, rolling out in the AMX ELC BIS, the French Tier 5 light tank, again on the EU server. Now, I'll say straight from the beginning, I really don't like this tank. It's one of my hated tanks in the whole of Blitz. And the reason being is I love, I love its mobility, I love its gun. I absolutely hate its turret and its armor profile. It's as simple as that. It's a light tank, I know. You're meant to drive it around like a, like a lunatic. But that turret traverse is just ridiculous. I mean, I, okay, I guess, and I bet it was like that in real life, but that's not the point. I mean, it's a stupid, stupid tank. I mean, it's more of a TD than a light. Not only that, during the great culling at 5.5, Guess what? It got a nerf on the HP and on its engine power. So it's not as fast as it used to be. But thankfully, they did increase its DPM. So it's not all as bad as it thinks with the good old AMX ELC BIS. However, I still don't like the tank. Purser, on the other hand, clearly likes the tank. He's so far done 323 damage and he's taken out one kill. Everything's spotted up and as you notice, he's playing it like a TD realistically rather than a light, which I think is sensible play. A lot of people will disagree with me, but because the turret is so awful, <laughs> you, you, you have no choice but to play it this way. I, I just never got on with this tank and I couldn't wait until I grinded the heck out of it so I could get the next tank in line, which is much better because the turret goes all the way around. Um, I struggled in this tank, never liked it, never will, and you know, I'm glad that somebody else does like rolling out of it. And Persa here is still plowing damage into that Leo. But as I said, oh, that's my volume, by the way, before anybody adjusts. And as I said, at the end of it, he's playing it like a TD, which I think is the only logical way you can play this tank. In my opinion, I mean, but, you know, others will disagree with me. Because you can ride around the battlefield like a lunatic, get to the position you, you want to get to, and all of a sudden you can't move your damn turret. What's the point, really? There isn't. Anyway, not to worry. So, 634 damage. He's bounced nothing. He's still got his full hit points. And he's taken two kills. Look at this, he's struggling to get that good. The gun depression on this is absolutely pants as well. I mean, gun depression wise, my God. I mean, you're just talking awful, awful gun depression. It's five degrees. The turret doesn't go around and it's five degrees. It, it, it's just, oh, I just don't like this tank. And you know, I'm sorry if people like this tank, but I don't. Person likes it, kill number three. Just done shy of a thousand damage now. Now it's three against two, and he's still going to sit here in his TD position because <laughs> you know, it's the, this, this tank forces you to play like this. And, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And a lot of people may complain, oh, he camped, he did this, he did that. Guys, if you think, you know, I'd, I want to see your replays on you playing the AMX EL, ELC BIS, where you don't camp, where you drive around the battlefield like a complete and utter numpty, and, 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 you know, you get to use this turret effectively because I never have. That's a great bounce there, by the way, and a really good engine fire. Now up to 1,300, and he got a great bounce there, 200, from a KV-1 of all tanks. Dispatches him, kill number four. Now the Stug's got him in his sights, and the Stug is on the way to try and get rid of him. It's one against two. And, you know, I'd be honest, I would fancy the chances of the red team winning this rather than the AMX because I've never really seen an effective AMX hold two tanks off. It'd be an absolutely fantastic Kolobinov if he can do this. And um, I don't think he can, but it would be fantastic. And I'm really rooting for you here, person. Type 34 gets a nice shot in. Can he finish him off? Oh, the Stug's getting in there as well. He, he, he moves it. The Stug misses. He, good move there. What's he going to do? The 34 is probably down to a one shot. If only he could get to that 34. He's definitely a two shot. Can he get the 34? Oh, he misses. <laughs> That's just outrageous. Come on, Persa. He can get the 34, big fella. He can do it. Oh, no. Don't go back in. Then there's a Stug there and he'll hurt you. Great shot into the Stug. Oh, they're both a one shot, realistically. It could be a fantastic game. It's going down to a nail biter. 
He gets the 34. It's just a stuck to go. This is a real nail biter. Oh, come on, Stug. Stick your nose up. Let him get one into the front glass. He has played to get an engine fire. Come on, you can do it, Purser. My God, this is fantastic gameplay. I've never been so excited watching an ELC BIS play. Oh, please, Stuggy, do not, do not. Oh, look at that, even somebody else is saying it. His, his platoon mate Stanley Ford, he wants some mastery. And who can blame him? I want the bloody mastery for him as well. I oh, know he gets it, but I want him as well. I want him to get a Paul's medal. I want him to get a Kolobinov. I want him to get everything. Come on, 40 seconds to go. You've got a light tank. Get around the back of the stug and plant some AP into the back of him. Come on, you can do it, good old purser. Please don't wipe out now. You can do this. 20 seconds left. Oh, the stug makes a fantastic move. Oh, what a great shot. It's one on one. Can he drop the adrenaline and get the stug? Can he do it? Ten it point. Oh, oh my God. That is so unlucky, unbelievable. What a fantastic match. Absolutely fantastic. The seat stuff. And I don't think you could have played that much better. A well-deserved mastery there, Purser. Really well done in that little tank. And I was rooting for you, mate, to win that game and get all the medals that you deserved. Anyway, moving on. This is another good friend of mine, Velvet Underwear from, yeah, my clan, FTC1. Yay! Going out in a tank I absolutely adore, the Dicker Max, the German Tier 6 Premium Tank Destroyer. Now, I do like this tank. I'll be honest with you. When it first came out, I absolutely hated it. And it came out a long, long time ago, and its reload was awful, its mobility was awful, and its armor was absolutely dreadful. But in time, it got buffed, and boy, did it get buffed? And it's a really good tank now. Now, I'm not going to go through, you know, all the pros and cons of the Dicker Max. In fact, if you click the little tab at the top that you're just seeing in the right hand corner, there's a video I've done on the Dicker Max, which tells you everything you need to know. This allows me to focus purely on my friend Valve Underwear's gameplay. The Dicker Max has got fantastic gun depression, as you can see here. Valve Underwear is able to stick it on this ridge and use that gun depression to his maximum advantage. And he's given that Tiger P a bit of a hard time. He's already given the SU-100Y a pretty formidable tank, uh, so much of a hard time that he's gone. And there's a Nashorn, another really tricky and fantastic TD, by the way. And I did a video on the Nashorn also. But back to the Dicker Max and Valve Underwear. He's going to get this Nashorn now. Goodbye, Nashorn. He's done 1,500 damage. He's blocked nothing, but nothing's hit him either. If any of these tanks get shots on him, they're going to pen him. It's as simple as that. It's a pretty easy tank to pen. And oh, what a fantastic shot onto that Tiger P that was. 1,743 damage, three kills. Took a bit of a pounding there from the T-3485, as I said. Most tanks will pen this thing. It, 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 you know, it's as simple as that. It is pretty thin, which is why it's got good gun depression. And, you know, it, it's, it's DPM. It used to be woeful, but now it's pretty good. You get good pen, and you actually get a fantastic damage. I mean, 350 into that. T3485. Mobility is a lot better. I mean, as you can see here, he's getting to turn around to face this thing pretty quickly. Another 330 into him. He tries to get around. Great bounce. That's, that's a, a bounce you very rarely see in a Dicker Max. Now he's only a one shot that T34. Can. Yes, Velvet Underwear gets him and dispatches him easily. Kill number four 2,673 damage. I mean, that is a lot of damage in this thing. Just a Tiger P left to go. What can he do? Well,. He can bounce, that's what he can do, which is a damn shame. And like most of the matches that we've seen so far, it's now one on one. And this time, it's actually a TD that we're watching against a more formidable target. In all the other matches, it, I think it was a TD that was left at the end. Goes to show, doesn't it? Tiger P makes a massive mistake, allows Velvet Underwear to shove one straight into his side. Five kills, 3,000 damage. Wow. That is a fantastic 
game. And I'd like to say thanks to Valve Underwear of FTC1, yay, for kindly sharing that replay with us, which was brilliant. Last but by no means least, really good friend of mine, Major Easy of the clan BTSV, rolling out in the AC for Sentinel, the British Tier 6 medium on the EU server. Now, is an interesting point for you. When Major Easy sent me this video, he said, finally, after rolling out in this beast for so many battles, I finally managed to get an ace. And mightily chuffed I am, and I'm more mightily chuffed that he's decided to share that replay with us so we can all bask in that glory, because it is an accomplishment. I mean, when you ace a tank that you've been rolling out with so long, boy, do you feel chuffed. And I feel chuffed for Major Easy. Not only that, he aced it recently, which, unfortunately, this tank did not escape the 5.5 culling. Firstly, it used to be a premium tank. It's now a collector. It lost 20 hit points. It's now down to 500. The rate of fire, well, that changed from 21 and a half rounds a, uh, a minute to 15 and a half rounds a minute because the reload time went up from 2.7 seconds to 3.8 seconds. DPM, well, obviously that changed because everything changed on it. Thankfully, that's pretty much the only thing that changed about it. The, AV, the AC4 Sentinel is still a pretty formidable tank. It always has been. Um, you know, it's HP. Okay, it's still around 970, which is which it's not bad for this tier. DPM, as I say, is pretty good. Penetration, you get 145. Damage, you're doing about 160. It's a British tank. Reload time, as I say, that's all changed, which means the rate of fire is changed, which is a damn shame. Um, the aim time just shy of two seconds, and the gun depression being British is about nine degrees. But watch the way Major Easy is playing this. I mean, it's got a fantastic turn of speed, and in the right hands and in the right position, boy, is this tank got some really great armor. You've already seen here, he's bounced 225, he's killed two tanks, and he's dished out 1,500 damage, and he's giving this T20 a real, real hard time. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill, because the VK comes in and helps him out. But he's up to, what, 1,500 damage, he still bounced 450, he's got two kills, he's put his team in a really good position. Now he's got 1,700 damage. I like this tank. I liked it when it was a premium, and I still like it now despite its slight nerf. It is a very good tank. If you've got this tank, roll in it and you'll have fun. If you don't have this tank, unfortunately it's a collector now. So unless it comes around as an event tank, the chances of you getting it in your garage are now pretty slim. Although we, we don't really know what Wargaming's plans are with regard to their collector tanks. I think they'll probably be used for events, but who knows? Anyway, back to Major Easy. He has had a fantastic run in this tank so far. Okay, he's lost quite a few hit points, but look at this. He's getting some fantastic shots into that Panzer IV S. Okay, Panzer IV S gets a shot back into him, but it <laughs> doesn't matter. Major Easy gets kill number three. Just shy of 2,000 damage now, and he's bounced 600. Another Panzer IV S, another bounce. Fantastic. I mean, I do like this tank, and if you know it and you know how to play it like Major Easy does, you can be really formidable. Kill number four, everything is gone. He has won the game. Wow, deserved mastery. Over 2,200 damage. Bounced a shed load, took four kills. And real big congrats, Major Easy, on getting the ace in that tank after so many battles. Really chuffed for you, my friend. And really, thank you for sharing that replay with us. So I'd like to say a big thanks to all those who supplied this week's replays. That's Major Easy, Jiggy With It, uh, Persa858-1, uh, Valvet Underwear, and Recoiler. Without you guys, these videos wouldn't happen, so keep them rolling in. Same old email address, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. Please comment and like below, and if you haven't yet, press that subscribe button. It costs you nothing. And with that, I will say, Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about, fun and happiness.